Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday the 4th of September. New Delhi all set to host a G20 summit, India to position itself as voice of Global South. Unrest persists in Pakistan over inflated electricity bills. And Napoli village women turn munching maggots into profits. And now for all the details. India's Deputy Foreign Minister Minakshi Lekhi on Monday termed Deputy India as India the voice of the, the voiceless Global, Global South and said under India's presidency of the G20 it is highlighting their concerns at the Global Forum. Lekhi said India is in the right position to engage in conversations with the G20 nations which control nearly 85% of the global GDP about the needs of not so prosperous nations but which are very rich in resources. Talking about absence of Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin during the summit in New Delhi, she said it won't impact the outcome. And this group was almost like voiceless group. So India chose to become the voice of the voiceless, to represent their voice because no policy will succeed until unless the have-ones and have-nots come together and we represent we represent both so India is in a right position to engage in conversation with G20 nations the most uh, smrid, the most prosperous nation and talk about the needs of the not so prosperous nations but very rich in resources well, rolling out of the red carpet for the heads of states, New Delhi is scheduled to host the G20 this coming weekend. The city has been adorned with a grand display of vibrant street art that narrates the rich tapestry of Indian history, mythology, art and culture along with meticulously landscaped greenery. Elaborate security arrangements have also been made by Delhi police to avert any untoward incident. And India's moon mission Chandrayaan-3 lander Vikram once again soft landed on the lunar surface as it conducted a hop experiment successfully on the moon on Monday. In a statement, Indian Space Agency ISRO said the lander elevated itself by about 40 centimeter on command and landed safely at a distance of 30 to 40 centimeter away. It added the experiment exceeded the Chandrayaan mission objectives, which may inspire future sample return and human missions. India's spacecraft had landed on the unexplored south pole of the moon on August 23rd, making India the first country to achieve this feat. Well, moving on, Pakistan is struggling to contain public anger over soaring electricity bills, while commitments to the IMF have limited the caretaker government's options to reduce the burden of inflation. A report. Public unrest has grown in crisis-hit Pakistan, with the country hit by widespread protest in recent days over inflated electricity bills. The uproar began in August as consumers began receiving their power bills for July, with rates jumping to nearly 100%. Over the weekend, a nationwide shutdown strike was also observed, with business owners closing in protest against high electricity tariffs and taxes. जमुरी हक है और हम अब अखबारों को ये बताना चाहते हैं कि हवाम का गैस और गजब बहुत ज्यादा हो चुका है कराची में भी आप हमें कानून को हाथ में लाने लेने ना दें ऐसा ना हो कि ये आवाम कानून को हाथ में ले और कानून और आवाम आपस में आमने सामने हो और दस दिन गरीब हो ये आपकी कमजोरी होगी और आपकी नाहेली ह Meanwhile, the economic worries have deepened further as the government hiked fuel prices to a record high on Friday, exceeding the 300 rupees mark. The hike is part of conditions for an IMF loan, which has complicated the task of keeping price pressures in check. तो आप बताइए कि जो डार्मन बंदा है वो क्या उसकी सर्वाइवल कैसे हो सकती है हमारे लिए मुश्किल है 
Since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan in 2021, around 50 clashes have been reported in Afghan border areas, the de facto interior ministry informed on Sunday. The Tolo News reported. Taliban's interior ministry spokesperson Abdul Mateen Khani said the conflict was a result of aggression against Afghanistan, which had faced reactions by the Taliban forces. He said Kabul does not want negative relations and called on the neighboring countries to respect the land sovereignty and the borders of Afghanistan. The Taliban ruled Afghanistan in recent days has been engaged in deadly clashes with Iranian and Pakistani forces over the border issue, which has been also discussed at the senior level between the different governments and the de facto authorities. And Sri Lanka has paid $100 million to Bangladesh in form of the second installment of the $200 million loan, reports have suggested. The island nation had earlier last month repaid $50 million to Bangladesh as the first installment of the loan. The amount, which was part of a currency swap agreement with the Bangladesh Bank, was provided to Sri Lanka to help it battle its financial crisis caused by economic mismanagement and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to news agency UNB report, Bangladesh is expecting Colombo to repay the remaining 50 million within the current year as Bangladesh itself is grappling with an economic crisis. And a group of women in a village in Nepal are turning the munching maggots into profit by drying and processing the insect eggs into poultry feed. Take a look. In a village about 30 kilometers south of Nepal's capital Kathmandu, six women wearing yellow rubber gloves and surgical masks work in a shed, gently squeezing the wet larvae of the black soldier fly into small plastic containers. The protein-rich insect eggs are dried and processed into feed for fish, chicken and pigs and sell at 70 Nepali rupees per kilogram. Opened in March with a $110,000 grant provided by the Women's Bank Finland, the fly farm is billed as the first of its kind in the Himalayan nation. The project is being coordinated by the Charity Federation of Women Entrepreneurs Association of Nepal. Our business lay. राम्रै हुन्छ भन्ने आशा छ अब यो बिजनेसलाई अब हामी दिदीबहिनी मिलेर अब ठूलो बनाउने त्यसपछि गाउँको दिदीबहिनीहरुलाई नि यो काम दिने भन्ने नेपाल इज अमंग द वर्ल्ड्स 10 पुअरेस्ट कन्ट्रीज एन्ड पीपल इन भिलेजेस आर मेनली सब्सिस्टेंस फार्मर्स द फार्म होप्स टु प्रोड्यूस 3500 किलोग्राम्स अफ लार्वे इन वन प्रोडक्शन साइकल व्हिच रेंजेस बिटवीन 45 एंड 60 डेज इट वाज लॉन्च बिकॉज इट्स अ ग्रीन बिजनेस एंड दिस विल हेल्प इन मैनेजिंग द ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट व्हिच इज वन ऑफ द कोर इश्यूज एंड अल्टीमेटली इट विल आल्सो हेल्प इन क्लाइमेट चेंज well, a restaurant in India's Indore city has introduced its menu in Braille for its blind or visually impaired customers to promote inclusivity and foster a sense of independence. A group of visually impaired school children were invited this past weekend for a treat at the restaurant named Guru Kripa. Chairperson of the Young Indians group, which has come up with this idea, said that they are in talks with more restaurants to create more such places. आज मुझे अपने पे बहुत प्राउड फील हो रहा है कि मैंने खुद ने खाना ऑर्डर किया है हम सब ने खुद ने खाना ऑर्डर किया है आज हमें बहुत प्राउड फील हो रहा है मैंने कभी कल्पना ही नहीं की थी कि मैं कभी होटल जाऊंगी या मेन्यू कार्ड देखूंगी खुद ऑर्डर करूंगी कभी नहीं सोचा था लाइफ में यहां पर महेश डिस्ट्री हीन के 46 किड्स को यहां पे लाए हैं जो स्पेशली एबल्ड हैं ब्लाइंड तो उनके लिए ब्रेल मेन्यू हमने सेट करा है जो यहां गुरु कृपा होटल में करा है हमने विजयनगर में तो यहाँ पे वो खुद के confidently menu देख पा पढ़ पा रहे हैं और खुद से बिना किसी की सहायता के order कर पा रहे हैं तो उनको वो चीज का बहुत confidence आया है। Well, India is home to nearly 27 million people with disabilities. They are largely an invisible minority with limited access and facilities to public transport and to spaces such as restaurants and movie theaters. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.